Livestock is uh, not just destroying the environment by creating erosion and the biodiversity as a result, but also polluting the water courses and by so doing, affecting the entire biodiversity. Because I have protected this vegetation for over 40 years. Olarinigo is a key biodiversity area. And there is a lot of water here. Because the vegetation and the water, they go together. Olarinigo is the watershed for the Great Rift Valley, lakes of Baringo, Bogoria, and, and uh, Lake 94, as they call it. By the sheer presence of the cattle in wildlife area, they are disturbing a balance. Because of the amount of buffaloes that we have here, who bring East Coast fever to the cattle, the illegal herders must use a pesticide in order to keep their cattle alive. And therefore, uh, they pollute the courses of water, they carry this uh, pesticide with them, and by extension, the vegetation is affected in, at large, the forests are affected. They talk about cattle like walking gold, because it is money that walks. But of course people who invest in livestock don't have the land for the livestock. There is going to be no future for the wildlife and the environment in this country. So where hundreds of thousands of livestock are invading wildlife space. The most important thing is also to remember that there will not be a live elephant was it not for the space for this elephant. That was unusually speared with a poison spear and it was surrounded by livestock. We lost over 200 elephants in the last few years. I stood on the carcasses. I smelled the death of those elephants. I saw the maggots. I saw the horror. The first elephant that we lost in this year, in January 2016, we got the tusks, 100 pounds, and I'm sure they will be burned to the rest. Ivory actually nobilifies the teeth. They should be called teeth, not ivory, I don't think. Ivory seems like a substance, like diamond, like gold something of value of some sort. There should be no value in the teeth of the elephant. It is only a sad reminder that once those teeth were on a live, majestic, symbolic, iconic animal, they walk Africa and is no longer there. Since the lifting of the 20 years moratorium on the sale of ivory, Kenya saw a beginning of poaching again. And here in Olarinero, which is the largest private conservancy in Kenya, situated on the edge of the Great Rift Valley, the hunting of elephants illegally instantly began. Poached elephants were found daily. And in 2009, Within a very short period of time, we lost 64 elephants. In some cases, we arrived before the poachers and we retrieved the ivory that we gave to the KWS. When the ivory will be burnt again, some of the tusks in that pyre are of elephants that lived and died in Olarinero. It's personal for me. I'm Kitili Mbathi, Director General of Kenya Wildlife Service, and welcome to Nairobi National Park. We are in the final process of um, our ivory burn. We are going to 
tally each of the tusks as they come out, take them down, and start building our pyre for the fireworks. Okay, good. Six, Six. you gave you eight. eight. Ten. Ah, ten. Kenya is demonstrating through the burn that it believes that there is no intrinsic Two. value to ivory. Six. The only value in ivory is as tusks on the elephant. And what we are trying to do is um, stigmatize ivory, ivory jewelry, ivory trinkets, so that it plays a part in reducing the demand for ivory. Ultimately, we would like to see a total ban in the trade of ivory so our elephants have a better chance of surviving over the next generations. We will have uh, 10 towers for ivory and one tower for the rhino. We put it on the base on the ground. Yes. We put it standing up. Oh, yeah. I feel very sad to see um, that so many elephants had to die, a lot of them through poachers. I think it just demonstrates that Kenya is very serious in its anti-poaching efforts, in its conservation efforts for the rhino and the elephant, and it is to encourage a movement to ban the trade, uh, global trade in ivory and rhino horn. The first ivory fire. Proud to carry, to be helping. What a childhood, yeah? This burn is a clear message to the world that Kenya will not tolerate illegal wildlife trade in any form. It is a massive amount of ivory, an extraordinary gesture of Kenya of leading the way in uh, ensuring that the world gets a measure strong and clear that there is no value to ivory. I think Kenya is very brave to do that and I think it is the right thing to do. Because burning something since the beginning of time has the significance of an end and a beginning, and a new beginning. A fire can be purified, a fire can be destructive and horrible. But there is something in the fire which is definitive. Going up in smoke means destroying forever something that sometimes should be destroyed. There is no beauty in a tooth. It should not become an item that people covet to own and to, and to show off and to display on their mantelpieces like beautiful objects. There is nothing beautiful about it. And people forget when they go into shops in Beijing or in Thailand. People do not make a connection between the object they have on their mantelpieces or on the table in the agony, the horror, the fear, the danger, the death. The ivory that belonged to a live elephant should only be on the elephant.